Hey seniors, I'm gonna try a new thing. <clears throat> uh, we'll see if it works, see if it lasts, see if you like it or if it helps. But it's gonna be called In Less Than Five Minutes, where I give you a summary of the lesson slash lecture slash class discussion of that week or day in less than five minutes. And because I tend to ramble on, this could be quite a, a challenge. Let's see. English as a language has five basic sentence arrangements that uh, are pretty popular, even predominant, some might say. Of those that we looked at, it's noted, noteworthy, that the subject always comes first, does the action, and creates an interesting and often problematic relationship with the other slash object of the sentence. Keep in mind Descartes' very famous maxim, ego cogito sum, translated into English, I think, therefore I am, which uh, also sort of encapsulates this subject-oriented philosophical worldview. So even though, even though Descartes came up with this, you know, wonderfully profound statement, I think, therefore I am, it's worthy to note that he also considered animals as machines that didn't think or feel or have souls. And the rumor has it that to prove that point, he took his wife's dog, pinned it, to like, I don't know, somewhere and dissected it while it was still alive. I know it's gruesome and I'm sorry for the graphic detail, but it comes across some of those problems I was mentioning regarding the subject's relationship to the object, the self to the other, and the great chain of being. The problem with that hierarchical sense of things was that people like kings, men, English folks were often given serious priority other people over people who didn't belong within those categories. When you subdivide human beings as privileged over other human beings or even animals and plants via Descartes' dog, um, his wife's dog. That's like a two for one. Anyways, it's a problem. So in this class, we're going to be studying two disciplines. Uh, you learned a lot about rhetoric last year as a junior. And this year, we're going to focus on hermeneutics and poetics. Uh, hermeneutics, if you wanted to boil it down or... I guess in a nutshell, wait for that pun to sink, the, uh, the question is, what does this text mean? What's the main idea? And uh, when we start looking at poetics, we look at the language, the syntax, to discuss how this text means what it does. How do we get the effect that the text has because of things like sent sentence arrangement or use of metaphor, etc. Gerald Stern is one of my favorite poets, and we looked at one of his poems called I Remember Galileo, where he describes... Uh, in vivid detail, a squirrel trying to cross the road and thinking, you know, I'm, I've, theory will do in paper, he says, but for this life, I need a squirrel. And uh, it's sort of a, well, there's a lot of main ideas going on there, but one central one, hermeneutically speaking, is that uh, he's blurring the lines between him and animal life. He is a squirrel. And that's something Descartes couldn't bring himself to say because he wasn't a poet. So while we're considering broader perspectives, Remember, this is your prompt, Britlet, uh, regarding George Orwell's 1984. We're going to discuss this and eventually write about it. AP, stay tuned. We haven't really even begun to prompt. It's exciting. And uh, let's see if I did this in less than five minutes. I'm not sure yet. I'll see you next class.